imagine the effort required to make those little holes in all those little pieces of shell. The redundancy of bowl design and pottery design bores me, but would not bore the anthropologist or archaeologist. A man, or two men perhaps, displayed sitting on those stone chairs that may have been reserved for important personages. This is interesting just because of the different levels, if you will, of this neck of the bowl, as well as its design. There's a clever ad adaptation for a neck of a bowl. Interesting, they almost look like they were designed as oil lamps, and maybe they are. They're ritual cups. With all due respect, it looks like this monkey is playing with itself as it begs. It's the emotion of fright or surprise. The reason these sculptures are shown with that wood stacked on top. What for? I don't know, unless that's a ceremonial statue as well as ceremonial type of incense wood. And it's what it is. Very tiny spinning weights rather than the discs that we've seen before. But notice how they're intricately designed, many of them, and inscribed. You can imagine that women would have each had one of these and held them prized and others knew who owned which. And are these perhaps necklaces made from such devices? These are bone pins that would probably use to hold garments together. Through these little holes, you would insert a string of some sort and then tie it around the other end once you had it through the two holes in the garment. These are what they look like, bells. Notice the stylization of the large bowl holding a smaller bowl. <laughs> An elegant modification of this bowl on stilts. These are decorative chest plates. But notice these are bronze now and copper. And where Christmas bells came from. These are nose plates or perhaps even earrings. They're very small chisels. That's interesting. I've never seen them. Of course I would mistake those for more clothing pins. These are needles. You have to have better eyes than I to distinguish between these and the chisels, because these look like small chisels to me. And these are about the size of a dime or a penny. These smaller than a dime, the one in the middle. Probably decorations, earrings in the form of birds of some sort. These are clothes pins. You can see that these things would have been so big as to be a, a design, an aesthetic statement, not just a practical device. Maybe they were even used for more important garments. These are really big. This is interesting. It reminds me of some of the work I saw in the Athens, Greece National Museum. These are burial plots. Burial pots. 
Maybe because they're more recent, the color is better to find, preserve. Now these are referred to as indigenous plows, but they certainly look a lot like weapons too, don't they? Like just plain hatchets. Maybe they had a dual function. These were referred to as spindle weights when they were in small version, but weapons in this version. I've seen this kind of design before, but why? What's the purpose of that dual opening in the bowl itself, but only a single opening at the top? So exiting the Museum de las Culturas Aborigines, and across the street is another large older church, a very long one. Since I'm in the process of burning out my hip, I will turn right, go down along the river and walk until I get tired and then take a cab. It catches my attention simply because of the tiled roofs that seem so consistent all the way down it. Streets like this and the, even the existing buildings and these older ones like this little one here, they give us a clue of how life used to look in this area. This is Gloria al Sagrado, Mary of Jesus. There's our cross for the indigenous who were not allowed in. Just a little look into the past, that stairway that used to be available, maybe it still is, but it doesn't look like that pathway is used at all. Giving access to this little neighborhood, but all that's been blocked off and not used anymore. I believe this is Broken Bridge, but it looks like it's been significantly restored. Well, I guess it goes without saying that once upon a time this bridge would continue right straight across the river. Although why it was built so high, I don't know, except for flooding. There was a time when flood waters went right above that bank. Now this Broken Bridge just preserves its past and is a nice little monument to help offset this walking path, bike path, not sure which, but nicely redone riverfront, which will now walk. There's our church on the hill. It wasn't open. And it may well be that these archways in their day were designed to accommodate the river at a very high flow level. A place for locals and tourists and businessmen to come for a little bit of respite and practice tightrope walking. Pretty pedestrian bridge across from this very dense but nice looking residential apartment complex that rampages up the hill. That's the main street up there near the Walking River. And down below is a man who works for the city that's job is to keep the river as clean as he can. This is an interesting residential area. Probably an ideal place to live if you live in this, want to live in the city. Working my way back to the hostel and run across still another church. We just had some interesting architecture. We may be able to shoot before the bus gets in our way. Particularly that, whatever that is up on top, a novel structure. It's even got a crow's nest up on top. Pretty cool. On the other side of the street, other than that building, some interesting old buildings.
very classic early 19th century corner building. And if I remember my trip in Lima, and if that information was correct, this tended to be a French innovation at the time. This is a pretty bit of architectural color and detail. Looking for a little uh, restaurant nearby, my hostel went away from the tour section, and I found one just a block down from the market that I shop at, uh, 3 November, which probably celebrates one of the Republican era uh, revolts. Anyway, uh, this is what I get, rice, beans, cheese, I mean chicken, and then some french fries with a hot dog of some sort. And then she brought this out gratis, just a little fruit uh, cup. And these are, this is picante salsa I can try, and these are some gnocchi. Yeah. And this is the little restaurant, my guess is this is the sun, and Papa was the one outside, uh, shepherding people in if he could, and he did. 